on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle. Check, check, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nah, 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 I want y'all to stop what you're doing right now. This is the time where you go and do what I'm saying, okay? That's what you need to do. I want you to go ahead and like, subscribe to all our platforms. I mean, our Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Snapchat, you name it, we're on it. Go ahead and subscribe. But if you want to see our full-length interviews, you go over to our YouTube channel, and that's where you're going to find all our stuff. Hit subscribe, hit our notifications so you don't miss not one of these interviews, okay? Because I don't want to hear that, oh, I didn't see it. Telling you now, but I'm telling you, <laughs> <laughs> membership underneath this description, underneath this interview right here, it says join our membership. That's how you can support our brand because we be traveling, we be doing a lot of stuff just to be able to create this content for you. And y'all love what we're doing. This is how you can support a brand. Sign up for our membership. Thank you in advance. Say, listen, man, we down here in Meridian, Mississippi. We, hey, listen, I done stumbled into a jewel down here. We been in a lot of different places at the same damn time, man. My guy. Squirt was in the building. In the building, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love hey, you, man. Hey, we in Meridian, Mississippi, oh, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Hey, listen, man. Yeah. And I got, I'm going to jump right into it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, um, you see a lot of the comedians that's been having issues with each other. You was the one that I talked to to calm the storm to say, man, you been in this forever? What the hell right, is going right, on? Right. Is this a new thing or has this always been present and the Cat Williams interview just blew this shit out the window? Actually, me and TK started all this gangster shit. I remember that. You know, so I didn't even well, think about yeah, that. Yeah, How know, long ago was that? No, it was right before. It was right before Cat and him. You know, Damn sure it was. Also, but that's what started shit. it? It was yeah. pretty much. Because yeah. I seen four niggas on the screen. So and nobody was else, nobody else man, was doing this man, before that. They wasn't TK sure. It was wasn't out in the our, open. Our beef was the first beef that went viral. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah. Okay. Cat was the first beef that went super viral. It went horrible. You know what I'm saying? But it was all on the same level. Even though me and TK can squash our beef because at the end of the day we was two real niggas you know what I'm saying and sometimes it was a time when people just fight it out right. you know you gotta nigga, catch a fade you know sometimes you fight out of respect and, and then you you get the situation respect is established you shake hand and and that is what it was but mm -hmm. nowadays you know you can't do that. Them days are over. You right. know what I'm saying? You got it. Wow. Go. But I wish, though, I wish that people would go back to those days of always trying to catch a fade rather than picking up a gun to try to shoot somebody. Exactly, exactly. But the problem is now, they they can't, they can't they snit their tail. You know, you can't get knocked out then tail and snitch and, you know, fight, you know, just catch a fade, win, lose, a draw. It don't even matter if you lose. You won by fighting, but you mm -hmm. lose by fighting. See, back in the days... Everybody won when you catch a fade. Mm -hmm. Now everybody lose when you catch a fade mm -hmm. because now it's so much riding on it, especially if you got, you know, and that's what always fucked my brand up. I always put my mentality over my gift. You know what I mean? And when you put your mentality over your gift, it block your it block your blessings. I gotta address the fact of uh um, you know, you and Cat William got a long history together. Yeah, that's my guy. Um, when you seen him I hadn't talked to you since the Shannon Sharp interview. Mm -hmm. right. Like when you seen that interview and you seen him in his element, was it something that you already knew he could take it there? Listen, the one thing I know about Cat Williams is he he don't lie. You know what I'm saying? And everything I could vouch for a lot of stuff. So everything said. was true. Yes, he 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 just have a way of saying it, you mm -hmm. know. And he didn't he he just told the truth. In his style, and it was truthful. Like even when they talk about he used to right. run for a point. Listen, uh -huh. one thing I me and Cat was real tight friends back back in the days before me and Mike Epps. We was too we was too two peas in the pot. We was too underground, and they didn't let us in clubs because I was sagging and I was dug out. Mm. No, nah, you can't wear that. Cat used to be cat in a hat. No, nah, no, nah, you can't get in like that. We'd be on the outside of clubs, and the same people wouldn't let us in. You know what I'm saying? He ended up putting on tour with him and all kind of shit. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
for years I used to challenge Cat, but he was always funnier. He was always smarter. And he always just had a different mindset. And he was kind of like tougher because we used to fight all the time. And Cat was the one that was always starting the fights. So I was always jumping in. <laughs> Me and Cat used to fight more people at comedy clubs than we fought each other. We never fought each other. Oh, but wow. we always fought at because Cat was quick tempered. Uh -huh. I never seen nobody love taking off on motherfuckers bigger than him. Cat, but can I he like, fight though? He started to fight, but can he actually fight? Man, Cat can fight. You know what I'm saying? I swear to God, I will not make that up. That little motherfucker could fight. Mm. He 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 he's strong. I used to arm wrestle the nigga, right? And this was before I lifted, like really yeah. working out. Uh huh. But in my spirit, I'm like, that is look, look, this little nigga strong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, he always been who he say he is. And I made more money because I, I, and I'm, and I'm a real true athlete. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Like, I was, I played basketball, football, track and field, gymnastics, like boxing. Like nigga, I'm multi gifted when it comes to sports. You did gymnastics? Hell yeah! I mean, every nigga in the project. And you was a gangster? No, they flip. We flip on matches. Flip yeah, on matches. That's okay, how we start flipping. We so you don't understand. Wall, you don't understand. Flip off the match. We, we flip off the wall. Flip matches. off the. Match. I broke my arm. Yeah. Uh, flipping off matches. When I think about gymnastics, I'm thinking that you at school doing <laughs> no, gymnastics. No, no, no. Like, I mean, the only reason I didn't do it in school because. I I didn't want to wear them tight ass clothes. Right. Man, trying to get me like that. Man, that shit. I'm like, you, so, you grew up gangster. Do you really, you really think did this? What was dope about Cat Williams for me was the nigga is funny as hell, right? <laughs> but the funniest part to me was this nigga said he could run a four something, right? But right. then the nigga left there. Mm -hmm. And when ran the god, I, I wouldn't give a listen, damn if he I ran it or not. Listen, yeah. the first nigga he be, look, I was running like four, five, four. I was fast. Mm -hmm. The nigga beat me relatively easy. What? Uh -huh. my game. So here's the thing. <laughs> this what I knew he was fast. I was also a hustler too. I said, damn. <laughs> I knew they weren't paying us that much money to do shows. So when Cat get on stage, I had to get off stage. I say, and y'all know, I host. I be like, you know that nigga fast too. I give anybody out here. Who think they can beat them? We can race for any amount of money y'all want. And I swear to God, as God is my witness, at the hop in Lakewood every Wednesday night after the comedy show, we go to the back of the parking lot and we line niggas up and me and Cat would race them niggas. And I swear to God, we never left that comedy club with under two thousand dollars. What year was, was this? Up, racing them niggas. What up. year was this? This was some shit. What year On their ass. Yeah, this was uh, this was in shit. The early 2000s? Okay, because I was Fans. about to say, where the footage at? Yeah, we no, got they have phones like that. They have phones like that then. But man, I'm t I swear to God, I said, this look. And I said, you knew that nigga was fans. I swear, he was, man, that motherfucker was. He beats you every time. I was fast as much. He had to beat me a lot. I, 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 <laughs> you knew already. Let that nigga go. Gotta, listen, homie, you, ain't got, you, you only got to beat me nigga, once or but twice. But the nigga left and ran it, man. That's why I knew. I said, this nigga, the truth. He man, didn't only say it. I will. He went and ran it over. Mm. Man, right now it's 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 not two niggas in comedy could fuck with us telling jokes. I, none of these niggas can't fuck with me. But I'm saying that out of content. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. Remember, you know, uh, a lot of niggas. You know, especially when you come to this comedy shit, you look at a lot of niggas. Fame don't make you funny. That's real. And just because people fun, just because people laughing, don't mean you funny. You wow. know what I'm saying? It's different Break levels that down. to this Break funny that down. shit. You see what I'm saying? Break that down. See, just because people laughing don't mean you funny. You know what I'm saying? Everybody funny until you put a mic in your hand. That's you know, real. And what fuck you up with the... Or the reason a lot of niggas is not funny think they funny is because marketing, you can buy. So if you can buy marketing, you can buy fame. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So just because the numbers... The numbers... See, money and money... You know what the definition of money is? A beautiful lie. You know what the definition of beautiful lie is? A money. So if you put them together, that's a beautiful lie. So mm -hmm. if that's a beautiful lie, that means the raw truth make you a hater. Damn. Because a beautiful lie, everybody want that beautiful lie. I want that bag too. So you have a tendency to favor the nigga that's telling the beautiful lie. You see wow. what I'm saying? That's kind of deep, right? Mm -hmm. So if I say somebody hypothetical, let's just say, not saying Tyler Perry, but let's just say, oh, Tyler Perry shit is trash. You know what he gonna do? He gonna put up that bag and say, yeah, but they got, got 250. I'm bread it up. Right. Yeah, I'm bread it and up. then that beautiful lie gonna hide the facts. But 
But just because I see you got you the hundred forty million dollars, that don't mean your content ain't trash. You know what I'm but saying? But they still, because of the money, gonna call you a what? A hater. Because nobody wanna nobody wants you to tell the raw truth because if you tell the raw truth, you fucking up the church's money. You know what I mean? Wow. I, and you say that and it makes so much sense because you have a lot of people out here who basically have came up, boom, boom, boom. You got them popping up everywhere now. Yeah. Because the internet, not only it gives people opportunity, but it shows you everything that's going on. Yeah, and marketing overrides talent. So therefore, they don't really need your talent. They just need your platform. You know what I mean? That's real. Because if you got the nigga platform, shit, you can know how to market, you know, you know how to buy your fame, buy follow and all that shit. Shit, you gonna get a thousand motherfuckers because like I told Bubba Dub, right? Was one of the funniest, hilarious man, little niggas. Man, that's my nigga, man. Man, I love that little dude so much. Man, I love Bubba He's Dub. a microphone killer. And the, way, and the way he came in the game, yeah. so motherfucking raw and hella funny. You know what I mean? But respectful. I, he yeah, very he, he's respectful. He's super, super cool dude. But I told him, I said, Bubba Dub, remember this. I told him years ago, I said, remember, when you famous, people coming to see you. But when you really get good at what you do, they going to start wanting to come to hear you. Fuck coming to see you, you need them to come and hear you. See, coming to see you is a quick burn. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But when they come to hear you, that's when you gifted. See, Bubba Dub then crossed that barrier. Look, all of the internet niggas, they all certain niggas then crossed over to that level. DC Young Fly, established funny. Carlos Miller, he been a he was he he, before he went viral, he was established comedian. Carlos Miller is a motherfucking microphone killer. You know wow. what I mean? Chico being brilliant. It's my nigga. See, d- see what they did to bless the game and fuck up the game? The 85 South niggas, when they get on stage, they get the county. Good time. Man, everybody trying to do it, but they don't realize each one of them niggas are brilliant stand-up comedians. You By know what I mean? That's what make it different. Yeah, see, they get on stage and they clown, talk about people to have fun. So other people watching them do what they do, and they throwing that in to act. They just getting on stage fucking with people. But just because when you fucking with people and you just sitting there clowning and da 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 yeah, they laughing, but that don't mean you funny. Yeah, yeah. There's when you making fun it. of people don't mean you funny. Wow. You know what I mean? Insulting, being rude, all that shit, that's cool. But uh, that's not the art of comedy just because people are laughing. See, DC Young Fly in that 85 South, them little niggas know how to get on stage like the like the Rat Pack and have fun and, you know, you know just in a, you know get to know their audience. And people think that's a form of comedy. It is, but it's not stand-up. Now, if you look at them individual and they sets, they're going to go down. I done seen them. Them niggas right, kill them us. And all of them, all of them in, 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 in Bubba Dub, you know what I'm saying? All them dudes are fucking funny. You know what I'm saying? Even, like I was telling Faison, even um, um, Country, Wayne Country Wayne is funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he, he also a brilliant businessman. You know what yeah. I mean? But, but even when you, you, you get that level of money and success, it's very hard to take criticism. You wow. know what I mean? Wow. So he took Faison criticism as a form of attack. Wow. You know what I mean? So he felt some type of way when niggas say anything about them because that level of success and money make you very sensitive. You know what I'm saying? How do you maneuver though? Like, I love both of those guys. You know, I've talked to both of them. Uh, yeah. Faison showed me so much love. He gonna come see me. He gonna show me love. He gonna answer the phone. I ain't gonna lie. He, he and same thing with Country Wayne. I've never had it to where he didn't answer the phone. Yeah. He actually called me first. Mm-hmm. He calls all of the back and forth. But how do you maneuver when you you say you rock. I know you. I only met you because mm. of Faison. Yeah. But then you say that you rock with you know with Country Wayne as well. How does how do you how do you maneuver? I mean, I don't rock with Country Wayne, but I like Country Wayne. I fuck okay. with him. Okay. You know what I mean, you, I rock with Faison, but rather I like you, or rock with you, or whatever. My intention is not to. Um, I would rather bring peace than hate. Okay. You know what I mean? Because y'all both are very talented, gifted dudes in different ways you know what I'm saying and it's no reason for us to have that level of disagreement it's like when me and TK was having our beef yeah. I was appreciating Faison Love because he was the middle man between oh, the yeah, both he, of them. he put me in touch with one, TK talk to TK and talk to me and was trying to uh, bar, you know make sure we straight and let that shit go just like when he was going through with um, um, 
um, Country Wayne. I had to play devil's advocate. Be like, face on, that's the little homie. Embrace the nigga. You know what I mean? You the big homie. You don't go so hard. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then I was trying to tell Country Wayne, they mean, homie, don't get so upset because of the big homie said something. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. A wooty wooty woo. But, you know, and so you have to try to find peace in between bad things. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, you know, you talk about two millionaires. Both I'm not heavy. a millionaire, homie. I don't really like to get in millionaires niggas' beef. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? <laughs> like that, man. Like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Like, like that's what I think it was. Uh, I had, had this beehive about uh, a Turk. And, and how, I said, how do you, he your co-host, he be having problem with Birdman and them. And, and, and you know, the, the stuff they go through. He said, man, them niggas is billionaires, man. These niggas got their, they stay their money. Yeah, I, I don't like, I don't know, man. I don't like uh -huh. get a millionaire's beefs like that because, you know, um, no, I get it, but yeah. you know when you think about it, though, Country Wayne and uh, Country Wayne is uh, he got something different going. Like I told him, you're an alien, bro. And I know Faze was like, you really believe that? Yes, he's an alien on the internet. Nobody does what he does, bro. And, yeah, when, and, and I'm and, telling you, nobody does the what he does. It's his thing. Yeah, and see the thing about his his level of success, you gotta respect. You know what I mean? And and I respect anybody. You know what I'm saying? That got out the mud. You know, yeah. in one yeah. way or another. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, when I, I respect Faison, you know what I mean? Because Faison have been um, underrated. But I understand Faison's angle as well because he's been doing it since he was 14 and he's mid 50s now. Yeah. You got, and he gonna, you got skin in the game, just like you. If you yeah. said, man, I don't, this here, I don't, I'm not with, you know, because of how long you've been in it. I gotta respect you for that. Yeah. But then it also becomes a thing where, and I'm gonna get off the soapbox, but different eras, man. Like, yeah. you realize Faison is old enough to be Country Wayne's dad, yeah. and you realize uh, uh, Country Wayne is, is, is young enough to be his son. You know what I mean? But yeah. either way, the respect have to be there. Both of them is successful as yeah. hell. And at the end of the day, I hate that it's you. You was with that day when it yeah, happened. Yeah. You was at the show. And Faison, you know, it's like man, number one, you know, the era is different. Era is different. The era is different. Pierce so, is different. Pierce is so different. And what one thing about this era is it's one thing talking to young niggas because young niggas is not like you know. We old school, so we would tell them, Let's get on your feet, do this, and we go hard. Oh, we gonna go hard. But these young niggas not like they're not that. They're used to that. They, that that's it, that that offends them niggas. Fuck you talking to. So now times that with and add rich to it. Wow, you know what I mean? It amplifies it. It amplifies it. So what Country Wayne was hearing ain't what Faison was saying. Yeah, but he took it that way. You know what I'm saying? I think that I, I would love to see those brothers come together at some point. I'm working on it, man. I'm trying to get them to come together because at the end of the day, you know, it's it's not you know, especially Faison. He like he's just a real one, man. He he's such a like the 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 persona um, Country Wayne was painting the Faison. It's not true. You know what I mean? Nothing he said was true. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't it wasn't accurate and it wasn't true. Was that what Godfrey was trying to point out? Yeah, so what he was saying wasn't true. You know what I mean? It wasn't accurate. You know what I mean? It wasn't true. And and um, you know, and it's okay to be wrong and make mistakes, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes best to just, you know, accept accountability, say I'm sorry and keep it pushing. I want to see you know that I mean? happen, man. Let's get yeah. back to you, man. I got a question. So, um, okay, when we were talking off camera and stuff yeah. like that, we were talking about, my question to you is, why haven't you, because you say you gangster, but you say you don't join gangs or anything like that. Yeah, I said the difference between a gangster and a gang banger. Why have you never been a gang banger? Because I knew from a young age, you know, or I never did been a Muslim because the one thing about gangsters and Muslims is the reason I never gang bang is because the one thing I noticed is like if you look at this, this is what the no one thing in the history of gang banging. Here go the problem: less than two percent of crimes against the white man is by the black man. Wow! So what that mean is the only reason gentrification exists is because the white man know he's safer in the hood than he is in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. So that mean me gang banging is just a contract to self-destruct my people. You know what wow. I mean? Wow. Yeah. So 
when you're a gangster, you go by a different set of rules, kind of if you know, you know. But gang banging not include. I'm not going to kill you because of the color of your flag, this and that, or right. wooty wooty woo. But, you know, so it's a set of rules that's different. So I just don't, and like gang bangers, you know, it's always beefs against something that's like you, mm-hmm. look like you. And, and the, all they beefs is like, you know, it's almost like now Crips fighting Crips, Bloods fighting Bloods, you know. Everybody fight within their own little gang. So it's like they self-destructing, you know what I mean? Which don't mean, but in, in, everybody, but you know, they put it, they talk about the, um, you know, so my, my, point, my point of view is just basically saying, you know, if I'm gonna put in work, I'm just not going to kill everybody that look like me and act like me. But I ain't found no reason to put in work on nobody else. <laughs> you know, they want to kill a motherfucker. They, they want to shoot the motherfucker. They get caught in the trap. But y'all ain't saying shit to the niggas that set the trap. What the fuck? Yeah. The motherfucker that set the trap is worse than the motherfuckers that get caught mm-hmm, in the trap. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's why I'm always mad at people that talk about the, it is so hard on niggas to get caught in the trap. Mm-hmm. But y'all ain't mad at the motherfuckers that set up the trap. That's the real That's the real. level of That's evil. Yep. When they set a trap for you to get caught in and this motherfucker caught in a trap and you mad at him. Well, pull yourself up and get you. You know, that's why I don't fuck with niggas that golf. <laughs> <laughs> Me and you, be, hey, Safe ass hey, hey, I'm the same I way. I wouldn't fuck with no nigga that golf and you can't trust him. Mm-hmm. You ever see a nigga on a golf course? No. A nigga on a golf course, they behavior and the way they act these want to be white accepted niggas. Wow. They is the worst. I'm, I don't... I mean, I listen, I mean, if you see me on the golf course, you better, you should just turn your back because I'm probably going to rob somebody. I gotta, I gotta, you know, ask you about, you know, P. Diddy. Niggas be thinking they special on that golf course. I gotta ask you about P. Diddy. Mm-hmm. I gotta ask you about this whole situation, the, when they when they hit his houses, uh, the way they doing him on the internet, mm-hmm. all of these people are coming at him, but nobody's speaking up for him, and all of these people been with him. What's up with that? Hey man, let me tell you this. P Diddy, let me tell you something. In this industry, right? He go where the he go where the shit get deep. Mm-hmm. See, as when I came into the industry. I was already doomed because of my mentality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But the same thing that doomed me protected me. You see what wow. I mean? So that mentality protected me because here's going to problem. For years, I said, fuck the white man. I fuck these gay people. Fuck these bitches. All that. You know what I mean? Fuck these. But it was never none of them. You know who it was? It was all the niggas that was pretending to be, see, because for years, a lot of gay people, gay men, undercover gay men, would hide their they gayness behind their wife. You know what I mean? And then they go out and do their little gay stuff, right? But then technology got too advanced. So now they can't hide behind their wife. wife. So guess what they hide behind? The mentality and the brand of a real nigga. Wow. So now when they look like a nigga, act like a real nigga, and they get a couple of real niggas around them, they look safe. So you notice it. So what they do, they the real haters. So niggas never been scared of my talent. They don't want me to find out who their boyfriend is. Wow. <laughs> wow. You see what I'm saying? Bars. So, yeah, so that's what happened to P. Diddy. He was high behind being a real nigga. And all the time we think he a bad boy, but in reality he always been a bad bitch. You know what I mean? And you said that that's the same reason why cause when I asked you off camera you, why you've never been in another film since however long Man, ago. Man, these niggas will keep you up under them and you, you think they rocking with you but they really not rocking with you. They just using you as a, like, look, look. But look. can't you just go find an audition and just go well, yourself? The they, they not scared of my talent, right? See, them, them dudes that's doing all the sneaky stuff, right? They blackballing the real niggas. They paying hush money to the little gay dudes. You know what I'm saying? They making sure that the Jew motherfuckers don't fuck with you. They are the gatekeepers. Damn. They are the ones because you know that's why P didn't even expose all of them motherfuckers. That's, you know what what, I mean? that's why they quiet. That's why they quiet. They can't say nothing. You know what I mean? Because they've been playing both sides of the fence and keeping real niggas out, making sure we don't eat. You know what I'm saying? Why? Because they paying all this hush money. And sh- so the game is so dirty that it is so crazy because 
you know, all the ones we think is hella solid. Man. Man, don't tell them what they doing. Man, P. Diddy got all, P. Diddy probably finna be the hero because he finna expose all of them. Everybody, and that's what yeah. got them quiet. I didn't notice. Man, they, they quiet, quiet now. It's quiet right they, now. They, they quiet as a church house mouse. But right now, nigga like me, Shit, I you said, I'm solid talking shit. <laughs> <laughs> so do, you, do you feel like you've been blackballed in this game? Man, really, I blackballed them. Holly, listen, I don't need Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Hollywood ain't don't even really exist. You know what I mean? Because Hollywood was nothing but a marketing tool. Mm -hmm. They market different artists. But now social media is so promise that Hollywood is turning to the people that's already doing good marketing. You know what I mean? So it's them who help Hollywood, not Hollywood helping them. That's so real. So in reality, Hollywood ain't, they ain't making no money. They ain't making no money. They making money off us, not mm -hmm. on us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So they using the ones with the big followers to just, cause that's why they, they Hollywood sold they self out. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Once you start making niggas celebrities with no talent, Oh uh, shit, the game is the over. The game over. The game is over, homie. Now, now, go buy your fame. You know, buy your marketing, buy your tools, and get on stage. And, uh, and, and it, it's a wrap. And, yeah, do your gift list shit. You know wow, what I mean? Wow, man. Like I said, man, you you been in different movies. You did been in these different situations, man. Yeah. Um, who, when you look at like, do you do you like to see the rap beef back and forth, like the Rick Ross and Drake and all of this different stuff? Not to, re but but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Do you what do you think when you see the is 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 rap still on that level where people can get in that booth and really you know exercise this on wax type beef? Um, Kendrick Lamar. I think right now beefing is cool because one thing niggas don't want to give up is this lifestyle. Yeah. So yeah. they ain't gonna do nothing. They ain't gonna shoot nothing. They ain't gonna kill nothing. They ain't gonna do nothing because it's all smoke. You know what I mean? These niggas ain't gonna kill nothing on accident. You know what I mean? These motherfuckers love that lifestyle so much. Nigga, they, they, you know what I mean? Of course they love that lifestyle. They solely, solely get it. That's so right. the motherfucker ain't finna give it up because a nigga talking shit, they don't give a fuck. So right now, it's a good thing. You know what I mean? But, um, it's all about generate, you know, um, generating attention. You know what I mean? So what I believe is really a good thing for rap. But at the end of the day, everything that turned into a war because only thing you sell right now is a good war but, but j cole i never seen nobody come and pull back on the beef and say i'm recanting my beef i don't want to beef i'm sorry i shouldn't even put that out uh he did that what do you think about i've never seen that before let me tell you something about how this shit works man that's why i always go to the hood you know what I'm saying? i don't never stop going to the hood but one thing i don't do i don't let them see me coming and I don't let them see me, me go. Away. Away. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I like that because I'm you know the same saying? way. And I don't linger, nigga. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because, because I, you know, I'm too old for that shit, number one. But here go the way how the, you get soft. You get the identical twin brothers, right? They um, just got released from prison. One go to Beverly Hills, one go back to the hood. Now, once you get to hanging out on the golf courses and doing all the, the old wonderful shit them niggas do, you get soft. Yeah. When you hang with pillows, you're gonna become a pillow, nigga. Wow. Right? You hang with bricks, you're gonna be a brick. So now, six months later, this twin, identical twin, see his brother from afar. And as they walking close, before he recognizes his face, he'll recognize his brother mentality and he'll walk in a different direction. Wow. That's what Hollywood will do to you. Wow. These niggas are soft they and giftless. I used to have homies hanging around me. I used to have homies in the industry I used to think was my friends. Fucked around and find out these niggas wasn't shit. I don't trust no nigga. Every state you go to, you got a thousand niggas. You recruiting real niggas. Every state you go to, you got a thousand niggas. I got a thousand niggas. I got a thousand niggas. First of all, homie, don't no real nigga need a thousand niggas in every state to mm -hmm. solidify that you're a real nigga. Mm -hmm. Why you gotta tell everybody, no, I know niggas in every state. What the fuck that supposed to mean? Mm -hmm. When niggas tell me shit like that, I lose respect for them. No, then they come to your state, they think they know more niggas than you. Yeah, yeah. You gotta be careful of these niggas, homie. No, you exactly you know right, I mean? man. When you a stand up. You I had a partner one time, I thought that nigga was my friend. You know what I mean? But not only was he my friend, I looked up one time, I'm looking up like, damn. 
you know, if I hang out with you for 15, 20 years, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? I meet you, I'm a thousandaire, you, you worth 10 million. If I look up 15 years later, nigga, you worth 220 million and I'm still a thousandaire, nigga, you not stopping me, you blocking me, nigga. Wow. That's a block. If my friends become your friends, your friends is your friends, my friends are no longer my friends, nigga, you sabotaging yep. me. Nigga, you the devil. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So now, you know, so and so that's the type of stuff they do. I say your enemies to keep you close, not because they love you, because they waiting the right time to destroy you. Wow. You got to be careful. I got I got to go back to Shannon Sharp because a lot of, I've I seen Eddie Griffin, and I know you've seen it, Eddie Griffin and Mike Epps, uh, when, and it, you know, they got over it, but there is, is Shannon Sharp off limits doing the show, talking to comedians, can he, when people come at him, uh, is is he got a right to get mad, or is it a thing where he got to be he got to charge it to the fact of dealing with the comedians now, mm -hmm. or um, because when they came at him, he had you know he, he he didn't he didn't like it at all for sure. Yeah. But at the end of the day, is this something? Is he off limits? Is what I'm asking. Is who off limits? Shannon Sharp. The off limit for what? When like the comedians start making jokes about him, far as you know oh, on yeah. their sets. Yeah. Well, you know. Everybody gonna get made fun of, especially if you hot. I don't give a fuck what you is. Yeah, if they were coming at him for if, if you hot, you gonna be a target. I don't give a fuck if you're Mother Teresa. You know what I mean? They gonna come after what's Oh, you got the hardest, hard, hottest because, show out. Yeah, so the new, the new name of the game is, if I could take your name and throw it under the dirt, I'm finna get 20 million followers. So I try to stay nameless and throwing people under the bus. Under the bus. So I don't want to say their name to get my point across. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's just, and that's, 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 like what Cat Williams did, that was raw gangster shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, See, I said, I, I did, I, I called Faze on when it happened. I said, man, your name been mentioned two times. He fell back asleep. <laughs> you know how he is. I said, woke well, him up. Y'all say, nigga, they, your name mm -hmm. keep coming up on, yeah. on this interview. Yeah. And he finally watched it. But, you know, at the end of the day, he, I don't know what, him and Cat, I don't think they'll ever be back cool, man. I even try to get him and Cat to be cool, you know what I mean? But, you know. Do some things go too far and then it, it becomes something that's unbridgeable? I don't think, I, I think, I think as long as you live on this earth. You can make a change. You could, you could change anything, you know what I mean? You just change. I mean, look at me, man, I change. So, you could change, you know what I mean? Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, I, I, the, I love peace. Mm -hmm. it's greatest riches God ever gave me was peace I tell my wife every day only thing I love more than you is peace you know what I mean and if the peace when the peace go I'm following the peace you know what I mean I don't bring you know I bring you peace bring me peace I don't want to come home give me peace I give you peace because that's why I don't cheat you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying you can't be in your 50s and if you're 50 years old and you ain't married you know what you are? You one of two things. You even a, you even a, uh, you, if you 50 years old and you ain't, and you ain't married, you know what you are? You even a, a, a trick or a spiritual advisor. <laughs> Dude, crap. A trick or a spiritual advisor. I get it, man. But you, you ran away from my question. What's, what's that? What's Shannon off limits? Should they should comedians not speak on him or he? But you did you did answer. You, you know, said they, they will speak. They you say they gonna talk about you what he talking said. and you getting the information. They looking at you. So now you laughing yeah, like I be doing. Whether they laughing, you laughing or not, they looking at you, nigga. And now they're studying you. If you don't want nobody to talk about you, get off camera. Get off. Get off. Shit, they gonna talk about me, nigga. Look oh, at they you. Do they yeah. got to this big nigga. nigga. Say this. He said they ain't gonna be tearing my ass Me up, too. Like. That's why I don't trip off of it. Because at the end of the day, people gonna say what they want to say. Some are gonna love you. Some are gonna like you. But I, my advice is don't read the comments. The comments is the devil is what uh, Say Cheese Sean Cotton told me on Yeah, that show. comments, He man. said he ain't read them in five years. You better not read them. <laughs> they serious, ain't they? Hell, hell yeah. They tell your ass up. <laughs> Say, let me, let me ask you, man. Yeah, like, read the comment. I read some comments on me one time. I went and tracked the nigga down. You found him? Hell yeah. Slapped the shit out of him. <laughs> 
say that's real. I, I, the nigga was talking like he was a raw nigga. A nigga raw. I came out I, he was talking some shit that was so raw. You went to his IG? Nigga, I tracked that nigga down, sick the bitch on him. And the nigga <laughs> bark. Nigga, I, nigga got the nigga address. I rolled up on that nigga, man. That nigga was about four, three. <laughs> I, I don't even need both hands for that nigga. <laughs> <laughs> I slapped that nigga clean across the street. <laughs> bitch ass nigga. Like, man, wait yeah, a minute. Oh, microphone game grabbed. I was mad about that nigga lucky. I said, oh. Say, wait I'm, a minute. I'm mad enough he went big enough for me to kill his bitch ass. I sure they be talking to comments that make you go Talk off on them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let me ask you this. They be saying it for a reaction. That's all I read them, son. He said the fuck they want to say. Let me ask you this, man. Uh, Cat Williams. He went in pretty good on Ricky Smiley. Yeah. Was, I didn't even know so, about the Friday situation. I don't even be knowing this stuff is even an issue, bro. Yeah. But then I could understand he sat back and he waited all that time and he just was, I guess, watching what everybody's saying and, his, and get his opinion. Yeah. And probably like, was that a calculated interview? Because that thing is more watched than any other interview Man, on the internet. Cat the Williams, is, he don't have, Cat is calculated. So any interview he do going to be calculated. His mind, like I got a gift. My gift is I could put what I feel into words. You okay. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cat got the same gift. It's just at another level. You know what I'm saying? And he paint a beautiful picture, and he can make you see what he feel and what he think. You know what I'm saying? So he's a he he's a um, he really a preacher, a prophet. You know what I mean? He's a dope little dude, but you know at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like Eddie Griffin the same way. Eddie bad. You know? God, I love that dude. Man, me and Eddie be on the phone. Bro, I love that dude, you know, man. Eddie is the dude that put me on. I didn't know that. Yeah, Eddie Griffin put me on. I Tell me the Eddie, story. Eddie Griffin, I was at the comedy club, you know what I'm saying? And he, he got me um and put me in my first movie, which was a um, um, Master P movie. Yeah, uh, Eddie did that. Yeah, he put me in there. It was a... Um, I forgot to, it was Eddie Mo Eddie Eddie. I got the hookup, not hookup. Not nah, I, I put me. I got the Matt put me. In, I got the hookup too. But he put me in another movie called No Limit Soldiers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He put me in that movie, even though my scene got cut out. He put you in it. <laughs> yeah, he put me in it though. You know, I was That's set. hard. But then he took you first dude. Put me on tour. You know, he put me on tour with him, and I was an amateur. He put me on tour, and I was a roadie, so I carry the bags. Every once in a while, let me get on stage, and um, taught me the etiquette, and, you know, etiquette. But he didn't really have etiquette because he got kicked out of more clubs than me. You know what I mean? But, but I, I <laughs> Eddie was Eddie was Eddie like, dope, bro. Like how yeah. how dope was it? And did you understand? Can't who, nobody fuck was he who he was at the he, time? He's still who he is. The nigga having age. The nigga still, you know, nigga got a deep level for. Philosophy, theology, no, he spirituality. Bad. He bad. You know what I'm saying? He really ain't to be fucked with. Man, you know? shout out to her comedian. They called me the other day. He Huck told me, man, we coming to Texas. I think Austin or something. He was just trying to get me to come through, man. Yeah. Just, just, just to rock out with him. I yeah. love man, I love them, bro. Yeah. Like when they come to town, I know cause Huck, Huck the, the comedian, Huck, yeah, yeah, yeah. he gonna call me. He gonna be yeah. like, boss talk. If Eddie don't come, I'm coming, you know. Yeah, Eddie, He's like, Eddie don't do a lot of interview, but I'm coming to boss talk, man. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie man, I'm telling you, man, you know, it's like um, man, I fuck with all the real. You have to catch him is what it, I'm. I'm thinking on Eddie because he be he be focused on he, when you get older, bro. The yeah. you know, yeah. you don't a lot of things you don't value the same no more because yeah. you've done it so long. Uh -huh. I'm being real. Yeah. You, you don't look at things like everybody else, and I get it because yeah. I don't. Like I'm not nowhere as near as raw as Eddie. You know, that what nigga mean? raw man. He 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 raw. Bro, when he left, it was like dust was left. That nigga. Yeah, Eddie don't leave nothing on the man, table. Man, them niggas was in that man. I t they talked about that the next day. And t when this nigga got yeah. through at the improv, yeah. I was at the show and I heard Eddie, some niggas Eddie, hurt Eddie, behind Eddie, that. Eddie, Eddie start off with laughs that he did in your soul. Damn, he talked to people in that thing. I ain't never seen nothing like it in my life, and I'm going back as soon as I can. Yeah, he <laughs> raw. He raw. He's like, you know, it's some, some cats I just admire, man. And, you know, and some of my favorite comedians, you know, rather it's Eddie Griffin. I love Cat. I love Corey Holcomb. You know what I'm Corey saying? Raw. I'm Corey Raw too. Corey Raw, you know, Corey another level raw. I talk to him all the time. 
You That's know crazy. I mean? How did you like like did you? you I love Reggie Carroll. Like, but you've been around these people for twenty years, right? Yeah. So you yep. built a, a hell of a relationship. Y'all come up together. Yeah. A lot of them pass. I know some of the comedians them passed on because when you get thirty five, my OG, my uh, mentor, he passed away now. But yeah, you, Ronaldo you Reyes, my mentor, he passed away. You see, what I'm saying they start passing and yeah, RP to a man like the the Bernie Bernie Max man. He, Bernie the, the, Mac, man, yeah. These dudes dude dope. I met man. Bernie Mac on the set of um, he was doing some movie with Ashton Cook. Uh, Ashton, Ashton Kutcher. 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 Damn, yeah, that's the one yeah. where Ashton was gonna be his son. Yeah, and I had. I one, love that movie. What, what's the name of that, baby? I'll be watching it. Who's looking at some shit? Yeah, who's who's Guess coming? Who? Up? Guess who's Guess coming? Who, yeah, yeah. And, I, I, and I've never been a groupie in my life, but I felt some type of way when I seen Bernie Mac. So I didn't <laughs> want to just say something because I was so excited. Like real niggas love certain comedians. Yeah, and. But real niggas like Bernie Mac and Richard Pryor is like them, they're the same nigga when it comes to, you know, iconicness. So when I seen Bernie, I, I just tried to just say least as possible. You know what I mean? And I, and I, and now I say the same thing. You know, my favorite, I said, man, listen, I don't know you personally, but I'm a fan of your body of work, right? And he like, I know who the fuck you is. He knew you. He said, you that nigga run around on BT with all your shirts off, taking your shit off, skating and shit. Nigga, I know who the fuck you is. <laughs> he said, nigga, I got good news and I got bad news. I said, all right. He said, the good news is you going to make it, but it ain't going to be no time soon. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's, that's all I said. Man. Yeah. That's, that's, too raw. You too raw, man. My most like niggas like us, you know. Yeah, he raw like yeah, that too. Hang in there, man. Your turn gonna come. Just wait. Just wait. But you gotta work. You gotta get to it. Yeah, you know. But it's like it's here. You know, I got my own TV show, West wow. Comedy Jam. You know, I didn't know that. Yeah, I got West Comedy Jam coming out um, August. I got my one man show coming back called All I Needed Was a Oh, hug. yeah, you did tell me you was a filming when story. I came in. Yeah, like, it was that. the dark side or something. Yeah, and now I got, I'm doing my one I'm doing that so That was my uh, one man show. Mm -hmm. Now I'm doing my um, special. It's called Out the Mud. Wow. You know, so, you know, the world would see, you know, because, um, you know, like I pay my dues. And sometimes when you pay your dues, you know, it's only. Four levels of making in their life, wow. you know. It's a, uh, you know, it's like uh, first you got to make a decision. See, the devil fuck with you in confusion. It was niggas in the wilderness when they came from when Egypt when they came when Moses rescued them out of Egypt and they went to went to the wilderness. Them niggas stayed there forty years because they couldn't decide which way to go. Yeah, just to find out they was right around the corner from Jews. <laughs> That's right. So the devil keep you confused. You That's know what real. I mean? That's so real. you have to make a decision in order for you to go anywhere. So a decision, if you look at it like real estate, decision is like your foundation. Wow. Then once you get that foundation, you got to do the work. You know what I mean? I don't give a fuck. Because the thing about your work, nobody give a fuck about your sweat, your tears, your no. pain, your rejections, your hurt, yeah. Yeah. your let down. Nobody care. Do the work, nigga. And then when you build something, then you have open house, you know what I mean? So your third one is hustle, then you hustle. Look, Jay, look, look. Then when you hustle, then you get to that elite level, then you just negotiate. I gotta ask That's you. About, I gotta ask you about uh, Monique. Uh, she been do, running, doing her thing now, and um, uh, but but a lot of the women complain about not being compensated. The men, black men, do they be compensated when they on the level that they should be? In, well, these, in these different in the movies and all these different sets, or is it a thing? Because you feel like it, when you're on the outside looking in, you signing this paperwork, you doing all of these different avenues, you know what you're getting yourself into, but then later on, you, you guys are complaining. How does this world work where you, you're not taking accountability of this, the stuff you signed up for? Well, first of all, you got to understand the, the reason that um, black people get you know, or we lose out so much because we've always thought this was an entertainment business. Okay. But it's a business. It's a business. And not only is it a business, it's not an entertainment business, it's a marketing business. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's not a, because your talent. That makes sense. Yes, your talent have become obsolete. Your talent is not as important as your business. You know what I mean? All you need is a platform which is something to market. You know what I mean? So when it comes to business, you know, white people have been doing business since the beginning of the time. You know, niggas, we probably only, you know, five or six generations in. We still learning as we learn. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's a uh, it's a process. So when you don't understand business, it's hard on us because they 
aiming at our talent. You know what I mean? So what so you say, coming for our talent. In retrospect, once a person go through all of this, they look back and they didn't even know they was getting done away. And they no. figure it out and they be like, damn, I got done away. Because you got to remember, a motherfucker that's coming to, you remember, it's only two ways in this business you can lose your soul. Through a motherfucker, through a good time, and a motherfucker you trust. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So if you don't know business and... You know, and you got an opportunity for your gift to shine. You know what I mean? Come on, homie. You're going to take that opportunity a lot of times. And if you look at it spiritually, you know, your your gift is like, you know, your, your, your gift is your soul. Yeah. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. That's your soul. You know what I mean? That's your warehouse. That's where all that, your gift to create it. Now, the Bible said that the battle's in your mind. Mm -hmm. So that's your swagger. That's where you put the, that, you know, you put your, yeah, your yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's your swagger. Then it, the, they come and make you that offer. Like, look, nigga, I want to, you know, buy, you know, get your brand. And you thinking, hell yeah, you know, I want to sell it to you. Then you thinking they want your, you know, want your, want your, want your mind. They, but they want your warehouse. Wow. You see what I'm saying? They come yeah. to get your warehouse, not your swagger. Wow. Then once they get that warehouse, you stuck there with that swagger, but you ain't got no way to create. That's why you see motherfuckers still got their swagger. You're like, why that nigga not funny no more? Why the motherfucker can't do that no more? Because they stuck with that swagger, but they ain't got no warehouse. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You got to hold on to your warehouse. Because once you get all the things that you sold your warehouse for, you know, that shit ain't worth nothing. What does man again the whole world lose his soul? That man, God, you can tell you've been, you been reading. But yeah. I tell you one thing, these niggas can't fuck with me on stage. If niggas see me on stage for an hour, y'all don't know exactly what comedy is. But if you keep following the followers and you keep following the likes, then you part of the problem. Wow. I, I tell you, I want to ask you, like, what city sticks out to you that show you the most love when you go to it? Man, you know what? It's really... Everybody, not trying to be cocky, but everybody show me love because when I go out there, when I hop on stage, I'm really not performing for the people. You know what I'm saying? This might be kind of funny, you know, deep to y'all, but when I get on stage, you know what I see? I be seeing angels all in the head, all in the audience tickling people. Really? Because when I perform, right, I believe in God, so mm -hmm. I'm a Christian. Mm -hmm. So when when I perform for the heavens, wow. so I got my forefathers up there. Come on now. You know what I mean? That's and then I, like that I got analogy. the forefathers, I got my ancestors, you know, then I got my angels sitting around and watching yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. And then Jesus walked me into the kingdom did hey, God watch so you. you done played this all so out. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's every time we get on stage, I'm like, come on, y'all ready to turn up? Wow. And we just take over. So it don't matter if it's one person in the audience, 10,000 people in the audience. I'm on a whole spirit, different spiritual level. You know what I mean? And one thing about the, uh, the devil, you know, he came. That's why he came. See, God came. He came to, he made us out of dust. And dust we come, and du dust mm -hmm. we come, and dust we should yeah, go. But yeah. the devil came in a burning flame. Yeah. He came down in a burning flame. That's why your, your, your flesh burned. When your flesh burned, you know what I mean? The uh, uh, the Bible say that is to get it back to get your soul back, man. It's no price. It, your your soul is being held ransom. You can't. Get, it's no price you can pay to get that motherfucker back. Wow. Your soul is like a burning beast. Wow. That's why you see these niggas. They gotta go here. They gotta go there. Ooh, they just go here. They, are, they flesh on fire. <laughs> I mean, they gotta go here. They gotta go there. Nigga, ooh, yeah, it's going down. Yeah, ooh. <laughs> nigga, be, oh shit, it's going down. Yeah, it's going down. you know. And niggas flesh burn so much. That's why they have no ability to be loyal to their wife wow. because your flesh is burning, nigga. You only loyal to your flesh wow. you know what I mean so now the minute you, when you get a wife you can't have a wife you can only purchase her because you was purchased wow you see wow. what I'm saying so that's why your wife become part of the you know you just a goddamn actor you just, mm -hmm. you're in a stage play nigga everything you're doing is a production you wow. know what I'm saying wow. you know it's dead end so it's, it's a little deep but when I hit the stage nigga they just can't fuck with you know it's not that I'm better than everybody but I'm better than everybody because only I can do me like me. Wow, and you know you self aware. Yeah, you come, know yourself. And in between me and the rest of the community, they talk from here. They talk. They trend. These niggas trending. I ain't trending, nigga. I'm talking shit. I live through shit. I've that's been it. through that's shit. All. I done lived through it. You know, God. I took my pain and was able to manifest it into philosophy and a gift and funny. You don't even see my punchlines coming, nigga. 
Wow. What do you think about Kevin Hart? Oh, man, you know what? Listen, man, um, I would never talk about nobody that's always nice to me. Kevin is funny. You know what I mean? I love him. He's I love funny. Him. The movies, I, I can't even, I be waiting on his movie. Ain't listen, no nigga messing with Kevin them damn movies. Hey, listen, it, Kevin Just, is funny. I love the movies. I love Kevin. I love, what I really love about Kevin is everything in this circle is eating. Joy, Harry. All of them. All of them is millionaires. All of them get along. And all of he got the same crew. He ain't switching crews. He got the same crew. And regardless of what he going through or what he been through, the dude is funny. And I just, I, I think highly of Kevin Hart. I think he brilliant. I think he funny. And you know, I just wish him, you know, more success. Number, number yeah, because when I look Kevin in the eye, you know what I'm saying, or I look any of these niggas in the eye, you know what I mean, whatever I say about you on tape, nigga, I'm saying it in your of face. Of course. You know what I mean? So if I don't like you, nigga, I'm going to let you know. But, and usually if I talk about nigga on tape, I'm going to catch a fade with you first before I go talk about you. Damn. So I really only like talking about niggas in they, on camera, not unless I'm going to beat their ass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't fight no more like that. You know what I'm saying? Like that boy, that, that you make me think of Carlos when you say, "Are yeah. like, you preaching now?" Yeah, yeah, yeah I know like that piece, but I, I ain't fighting no more. I just um, just trying to. You just trying to, man. man. You, we at an age now, man, where really you can help a lot of the kids, like those, yeah. like those people that's coming up. All of the uh, the 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 Bubba Dubs, the Country Wayne's, yeah. All those people, man, they they definitely are coming up in a different uh, Desi Banks. They yeah. all coming up different than what you guys did. Yeah, well, I be trying to help niggas deeper. Like them niggas already made. I like to help the niggas over in the juvenile det detention. You know centers. what you mean? So I'm talking about the comedians. That's oh yeah, the comedians. I can always help them. Like they, the young of comedians course. are very respectful and super cool. I haven't really met no disrespectful young. Every comedian I meet, especially the youngsters, you know, from Desi Banks, super cool. Every last one, I'm so I really ain't got no, I really don't have. I suck my can't go viral. I ain't got nobody to talk about. <laughs> I remember, I I met hey, listen, you know, you know we talking about the kid Ralph Barboza, and uh, I met him at the airport. Me and my wife, we uh, flew back from New York on the same flight. And Ralph, super respectful, bro. Yeah. The little Hispanic guy, yeah. man, that dude. Super he is respectful. so nice. When bro, I, see Ralph, I talk to this he dude. He said, Yo, I just love you, you know. <laughs> I've been watching you, OG. He he's just like chilling, man. He, he know, he's just chilling. But, man, um, everybody show me love. And I love everybody. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And, it, and it's, and, but unfortunately, you know, um, love don't necessarily mean, Blessings, you know what I'm saying? Because it's not that type of, it's not a business where I can put you on. I can eat no, it. Like that. No. It's not that type of business, you know. When people like you, or love you, you know, and it's beautiful because it allowed me to walk around in peace and not hold guns and not have animosity. So I make sure I keep niggas' names out my mouth if I ain't got nothing good to say about them. Wow, and, yeah. and like I said, when I ask you about Kevin and, and these guys. I know you know them and or have been in the same room at yeah. some point. Me and Kev, so, we used to shoot dice for hours. No, we said. <laughs> That's like, why I ask you about them because I know I tell, hey, man, you going to give me something. That little nigga can shoot some dice, <laughs> man. I'm talking about we had a show in Kentucky one time and I swear to God, we shot dice. And at the time, we wasn't really making that much money. Kev was making money. I think he made like 3000 I made like 1500 right? And we shot dice so long that we was borrowing each other money from each other. I get all the money. I right, leave me three thousand. I get back. Now I get three thousand. And man, we shot until our plane got ready. We missed until we 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 shot from two o'clock that morning to about three o'clock the next day. Ew. I'd have been I, there Literally Like we just like Shooting dice You know what I mean So um, He a uh, dice shoot nigga yeah, I, I like that I've been not catching nigga I'm, I don't even play the fade yeah, I don't want nothing On the fade That nigga. nigga That nigga can gamble That nigga can you gamble know, When it comes to that Shooting dice You know what I'm saying I know he could. I know he could. He, he good at what he does. Well, that's the that's the reason I ask you about him because I know you got them hidden stories. The JB Smooth, the all these different people that I admit you've been working so hard and so JB long. JB Smooth, man. you've been working a long time. I know you know. Him. Hey, me and JB Smooth, <laughs> we did a movie together years ago. <laughs> me, JB Smooth, Corey Holcomb, yeah, Red Grant. 
I don't think Cat Williams was in it. Uh, oh, what Cat? What name? Did it, it, it come out? I think it was Cat, but it was called the Watermelon Heist, and we, and it was John Amos. Damn, was the, John was Amos the, it was father. And um, he we always played we play country bunker niggas. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we was trying to steal this pack, this big watermelon <laughs> for the, <laughs> who and, produced this man? Yeah, uh, John Amos. Son. Oh damn! It was, it, was, it, was, it was it was a crazy movie, but it was funny because we all just started and. Um, I played like this. I played opposite. I played uh, this cat named Whitey, okay. which was a big old goofy ass, you know, brother who just when she, you know, like act like a white boy. That's why you call me Whitey. I was <laughs> come on, you guys. I was acting like a golfer. I just oh damn. I just act like my favorite <laughs> black golfer, right? <laughs> All I did, <laughs> but anyway, man, me and JB Smooth, man, we had some. Man, man had some I, like I said, thank you for coming on the show, man. Uh, how can people get a hold of you? I got to say that. Um, the only scruncho on um, IG, and you can follow me on um, Anthony B Scruncho. Okay, on Facebook, on Facebook, and um, Scruncho on TikTok, and um, and follow me WestComedyJam.com. That's my new show. You got a out. YouTube channel. Yeah, and it's uh, Scruncho is my YouTube channel. That's hard, man. Like yeah. I said, we got to work all these angles because that, yeah. that's where it's coming at. It's, five years from now, that's where it's all the way yeah, at. I got to learn it because I don't You got to learn, learn that shit. But just got you, you, you know Country Wayne, you know all these niggas, you know me. We'll yeah. figure it out. That's yeah, we'll what we're going to be here for. I'm trying to get everything established right now. I think once I shoot my special, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I got everything lined up because my special is raw, man. It's, it's raw. Oh, man. I can't wait to see it. You had a little of it last night. I told you. Oh, yeah, 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 you know yeah, 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 for sure, man. Yeah. Hey, Step, what do you think about uh, Scruncho, man? When we go get him to Dallas again, this time he coming especially to come he, to Boss Talk. He always come to Dallas, so he just going to have to stop in. But he did Boss Talk in Dallas. Yeah. He been in there. Stop in when they come. We didn't know. We uh, know now, though. Yeah. I love you, brother. Like, I ain't yeah. never going to. I'm. A, I got your number, so I be calling. You know I call, yeah, man. Yeah, man. You know I call, yeah, man. Take it, man. Hey, man, make sure you check out these Scruncho clips, man. His interview was dope. This guy right here, listen, man, you better check this next one out. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. What We love you, bro. Hey, man, I love y'all too, man. Boss Talk 101, what a boss is talking. Congratulations on what? This, hey, man, the success of y'all. Man. Plus unity, you know. The marriage is dope. It's not a lot of husband and wife's team that's rocking at this level and y'all chemistry is dope. You know man. what I'm saying? I like how you go from gangster to nice and I should oh, go yeah. from submissive <laughs> he to got us, he got us. Yeah, you know, it's <laughs> like, you know, it's, it's a good balance. You know what I mean? Like I said, I, we, we just believe in God same yeah. way you roll. Yeah. And I think that's uh, us praying. We we hit our knees yeah. together. Mm -hmm. We we pray for everybody sitting in the seat. Yeah, I tell and everybody and that's the secret, man. I, you got to keep God in it. I tell everybody, to. it's yeah. not that I'm a Bible thumper you know what I'm saying? I just know one thing. My wife would not stand a chance if it wasn't for God. Come on now. Because if I didn't have God, I think I have bitches. You know what I'm saying? There you go. So I, I just said, man, I don't want none of that. So my loyalty with God helped me be loyal to my wife and it helped give my life peace. And as long as I got peace, then I'm successful. Think about it. You got a spiritual void. You got a physical void, emotional void. You know what I mean? Exactly. And if you don't feel it, then you're yeah. off balance. So plus, when you said that yeah. about the women and all that, yeah. that's just you saying I'll be off balance. That's off it. Off balance, man. And then plus, once you become, the worst thing you, it's nothing, the worst thing you could ever do to your wife it's cheat because once on. you cheat, you immediately work for the devil. You Come don't on. have no chance. She tricked you out of your position. Yeah, you you the devil. You blocking a bunch of blessings God can't give to you. Come on, man. Because the devil over there hustling your dick, man. And then, you know, see how we just went right back into it. <laughs> Listen, man, love Scruncho. Hey, Scruncho, hey y'all, make sure y'all go follow this guy. Go to his show. He kills the stage every time. He's my guy, man. Scruncho came on Boss Talk One Hundred and One, man. Hey, man. I appreciate y'all, man. Hopefully, this time I need to get aired. Hey, it's, I promise you. <laughs> I promise you it's coming out before, <laughs> hey, before everybody. I can put that on everybody. Hey, guys, looking, I, mean, I knew you were looking for it. I knew it. I started judging other niggas. He going to put him on. You know what I mean? This nigga, this nigga ain't no goddamn boss. Hey, hey, hey. You ain't the only one gonna call me, but I called you because yeah. I was like, man, I love Scratch. I don't want yeah. everything. I'll get you back on here anytime. I'm like, I'm getting you when I come to Vegas. You remember that? Yeah. When I go, I'm coming to I messed this out of you up. Yeah. But I got it right now, so I got me two coming with Scratch, man. man it's going dope, down, man. man. Boss Talk 101, what a boss is talk. And we out. <laughs>